A lot of people out there want to know where Julio Jones is going to land now that he said he's out of there, referring to Atlanta. And thankfully, we have the answer on today's show. We also talk about Dynasty. We talk about all sorts of questions that you have, players' outlooks this season. It was a great episode that you will want to see. Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. <laughs> Landing the plane in the swamp. Oh, that was uh, creative choice. Oh, that was art? That was art. I went growl. The art, totally by choice. The art does what the art wants that, to do. See, right, Brooks Mike? is right. I was going to say, whatever you do, if you throw, oh, that was art. No one can say anything. Oh, yeah. You ever seen a bad performance art? No, because it's not for you. Yeah. It's for them. You didn't like it? It's not for you. You don't get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then you hit them with yeah, that. Oh, art. yeah. You don't. This is, you didn't get it. <laughs> Lo- idiot. What did you see? <laughs> I know that. Some of you uh, appreciate you sharing your concern for my voice. I mean, I, I was a little under the weather, lost my voice, worked to get it back. Didn't sound great on the old uh, mock draft episode, but the real reason that I didn't have it is I sold most of my voice as an NFT. Oh. So I actually don't own the rights anymore. Like a half Ursula? Right. So I'm very wealthy because mm. it went for big money, obviously. Clearly. They oh. took it away from um, me. But I don't actually own it anymore. I, I, my voice is the possession of somebody else. Here's the problem, Andy. We're in the middle of recording over 100 uh, player profile videos for the Ultimate Draft Kit, and you're going to need to buy that back. <laughs> you're going to need to buy that back right I now. I license my own voice from this person. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I'm good. As long as there's it. a deal. Yeah, Tuesday, May 25th. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thank you for joining us. If you're brand new, that introduction was about all you need to know about us. <laughs> But we are here to help you win your fantasy football leagues, and we are year-round, and we are getting you ready for 2021. It is a very exciting time because, as Jason alluded to, we do have the Ultimate Draft Kit, which is coming out in one week. This is our baby, our pride and joy. A lot of work from a lot of people has been uh, poured into this and will continue to be throughout the offseason. Yeah, this is not like a magazine where you get it and it's fun and it's cool, and then it's like, wait a minute, this player is not on that team anymore. We are, I mean, this is our full-time gig for, you know, going on most of the last decade, so I would say... Uh, a lot of effort. A lot, a lot of time. time. So we, we are in, like, the Braxton Hicks contraction. Correct. Right. That's exactly right. Because we're a week away. Birth not yet happening. Not yet. No. Those are the, it's not ready. No, but after it's, not, it's, but ready. After it's born, ready. after it's born next week, it's only going to get better. It's going to grow. It's going to become your child. We oh. nurture it. Yes. That's right. Feed it. It's like a Tamagotchi. We've never done the baby <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Metaphor. I don't know, man. I'm grasping at straws. This analogy, ta- won't, it won't stop. <laughs> a Tamagotchi reference? You guys got the half Ursula and the Tamagotchi. You're Look, just killing it over here. Up. One week. One week from today. And I am I will say this. I'm really excited. Uh, for those of you that pre-ordered, you've had access to Dynasty and Rookie Rankings. If you got the UDK+, Plus, you've had access to a whole lot more of the Dynasty Pass. If you had wanted to upgrade to the UDK Plus, do it now. You'll get the prorated discounted price. And June 1st is when the app comes out. So you haven't had access to the 2021 app yet. Huge upgrades across the board. This thing looks, uh, it's it's got a facelift. The functionality is improved, and you guys will love it. You can check all that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. You have uh, the new rankings for the year are up on the website. They are. TheFantasyFootballers.com. All of our rankings are up there for 2021. And uh, so that's pretty exciting. We'll have Explain Yourself shows next week where we will call one another out for their outlier rankings. Yeah, that that's one of the nice things about having the, the three of us. We don't always agree on players. And so where one of us disagrees heartily with the other two, we will take them to task and see who can change the opinion of the others if possible. Well, I'm going, what, five, six straight years of perfect ranking, so this mm-hmm. will be your time to challenge me. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe. Click the bell if you want to watch the show. Here's the quick question. It is a multi-flex question. 
from uh, J24 Kilo says, how does your draft strategy change in leagues with additional flex spots? Not super flex leagues. Right. But just more flex starting spots. Yeah, so assuming that you're not in the old-fashioned yet still referred to as standard leagues. Mm, yes. Um, and really, uh, I, w I would actually say it, it, it includes standard as well. Certainly, though, half point and full point PPR. Wide receivers become much, much more valuable when you have multiple flex spots because, you know, at the very tip top of running back versus wide receiver, the running backs score more than the wide receivers do. Then the next 15 or so players at both positions – well, they score about the same. Maybe it's more consistent with running backs, bigger boom bust and wide receivers, but they but at the end, they're going to score about the same. Once you get past those top 20 players or so and and the further you go, uh, you get down to wide receiver 36 versus running back 36. Oh yeah. Wide receiver 45 versus running back 45. I mean, it, it's not even it's, you you can't start a running back. You can't start one of the running back 45, you start them and you're going to lose. So that's where in a multi-flex league, I think wide receivers just become far more important. All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. The end of an era is coming. Julio Jones, not long for Atlanta. The trade rumors. Ab I, abounding. I see it as the beginning of an era is about to. It's mm. about to begin, Andy. How dare you refer to Julio as being well, that, done? Yeah, that makes so much sense because normally when like kind of iconic superstars change teams later in their career, mm -hmm. that is the that's a birth. Yeah, tell that to Randy Moss. Go on. That's a, go that's on. A, uh, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Soon, you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I look. And this I was, apologize if I'm not extremely excited about Julio leaving where he's produced robustly for fantasy players and we, finding a new home. We went from rumors to uh, the the man himself saying, "No, I'm I'm out of here." Uh, and when he was, uh, uh, we don't know how those tactics came about with the uh, Shannon Sharp calling him while he was live on the air. I don't know if it was uh, guerrilla tactics. I don't know if Julio realized that he was on the. TV giving out trade secrets, but we heard directly from Julio Jones on a television program saying he is out of Atlanta. He wants to go to a winning franchise, and then they dunked on the Dallas Cowboys. That part was pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> so so what, what are our thoughts here on Julio Jones? Can his value possibly go up? Can it possibly tread water, or is it just going down? It's just going down. I mean, I don't. I don't. I'm sitting here racking my brain of all the different destinations that are somewhat realistic. I would say there's about a third of the league that you could, you could maybe make some kind of argument for, and there's really only about half of that third that is truly, you know, a team that seems like they would make an offer and 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 go after him. And I can't see a situation where he would t even stay the same because staying the same for Julio with Matt Ryan in a in a passing offense that you know I think I've got Matt Ryan throwing for well over 5000 yards this year in this new 17 game season sure uh, he's probably if him and Ridley are on the field at the same time probably still the one that's just not a situation that you're going to there is go one to. team there's one team that I actually think this one season year 32 that he could produce near the levels in Atlanta. And that's the team I think he's going to. Now, there are only six teams with $9 million of cap space, a need at wide receiver, and are considered a contender if you want to qualify it by the... I, I kind of find that one well, funny because he said, I want to win, right? Sure. But I want to win also includes getting paid his full salary. And a team willing to trade an asset for mm -hmm. him and take on that salary. So let's, let's go one, two, three. And then you say where he's going to go. Are we saying that what the, yeah. the, the team, the last part of the name, or what? The yeah, the yes. Uh, okay, not the city. All right, the team name. So one, two, three, Chargers. Chargers. So Mike and I said the same thing. Yeah, okay. because we're willing it into existence. You get out of here with your Patriots stuff. The universe is rejecting that. Fantasy football is rejecting Julio Jones going to the Patriots. The universe apparently follows two thirds rule. Yes. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, you didn't know that. We should really vote on more stuff, guys. <laughs> so the. Chargers is the name that Mike and yep. I threw out. And that is the one place. 
that I actually believe he could go. I do too. And see the same amount of value because of Justin Herbert, because of the passing volume, because of the fact that Keenan Allen is a possession receiver and Mike Williams is is kind of a, a ghost at this point. He, he doesn't even really appear on the field for uh, four quarters anymore. And they don't have anybody else. So that's the one place that I think makes a ton of sense. The other teams with $9 million in cap space in that category, uh, Dave Richard tweeted this out, uh, Washington, Indianapolis, the Chargers, San Francisco, Arizona, and Baltimore. I do think the Colts are in play. I do think Arizona's in play. I, I know that's outlandish, and uh, I don't know if it was on this show that Jason brought it up, but if they somehow traded for Julio Jones and A.J. Green, Julio Jones, DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, they'd have to have Larry Fitzgerald come back just for comedic value. But they have cap space. Baltimore. Comedic value? The comedic value of having Larry Fitzgerald, A.J. Brown, Julio Jones, AJ, and DeAndre, Green. Uh, AJ Green, and, and uh, Julio Jones and DeAndre Hopkins on the same team, but yet so it, just a couple years too late. It's like when the uh, – the old, the stars of old, they always get together and make some type of movie. Right, where, the Expendables Eight. Yeah, or yeah, or like there was that Morgan Freeman one. I think they were robbing a bank. You're gonna need to be more specific than that Morgan Freeman one. Robbing a bank. I threw it out there. Well, other old older gentlemen with Morgan Freeman. Yeah, I, I remember that movie. I can't think of the name though. Nobody saw it. <laughs> Nobody our age. <sighs> oh, saw oh it. yeah, people saw it. They're just twenty years older than us. Is there? An opportunity for fantasy players to, like, if he gets traded to the Chargers, for example. Is that the name, Al? Going in style? Yep. Thank you. Doesn't they, sound good. They went out in style. <laughs> if he went to the Wait, is Hackman in that movie? Oh, Jane oh Hackman? R.I.P. Michael Caine and Alan Arkin. Mm. Oh, Arkin. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, sounds like a real treat. <laughs> is there a, a world where you could capitalize on the trade hype? Like, a oh, trade man. happens, and then there is the unknown. Right, if we think that the odds are that it's going to get worse when he plays, I, I I I doubt it. I mean, you're bringing up one team where it is possible his value stays the same. I still would not say that his value stays the same. I think that the Chargers have a much better defense than the Falcons, and they will not be throwing for the same amount of yards. And Keenan Allen is already has an established, uh, you know, relationship here. So I. You know, there, it's it's just as likely that maybe he goes to the Baltimore Ravens and a, a tiny pie. The uh, universe rejects that as well. Sure, the universe can reject everything you want, but the problem is if for some reason it squeaks through the universe's attention, then it's bad. I mean, where, where you capitalize on the trade value is, oh, I've got a giant Baltimore Raven fan in my league and they just traded for Julio, but that's, that's too much luck involved. It's going to be... I mean, this this might be the last year Julio has real fantasy value. Mm -hmm. 32 years old. Maybe right. it's the Colts. Maybe it's the Chargers. Maybe and, it's Washington. And a team that trades for him, yeah, they have the salary this year, but I believe his the dead cap in 2022 is around $2 million, a little bit north of that. So if it's the end for Julio Jones and a team makes a trade, they can – then get out. The Colts make a lot of sense. I they tweeted. Do. I tweeted they that. Do. I think that it, it would take T.Y. Hilton and Michael Pittman and take them from a, like a a bad one two to a really good two three. And the cap situation is bad for Carson Wentz, but you can get out of Carson Wentz and you can get out of Julio. So take the experiment. See if you're a contender, and uh, if not, move on quick. I I hate to. I know we're talking about Julio a lot, but it it brings to mind the fact that in our dynasty league. I believe it was no more than like a year, year and a half ago, Jason, mm -hmm. where you made a trade to acquire Julio Jones, and there was a lot of enthusiasm because they had just re-signed him to an extension. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I'm bringing that up just to say like age, the age of the extension really factors in. It's not as easy as just taking the amount of years they gave him and saying, well, Julio's locked in because things change quick when you're older, when you miss half a year due to a hamstring injury. Like, I remember being jealous of you acquiring Julio oh, yeah. in that situation. I went from, I think it was T.Y. Hilton to a little bit of little bit of move, got Julio, and then I went from Julio to C.D. Lamb. Let's go! <laughs> yeah! Well, Plus yeah, you, you got out quick. You weren't left holding the bag. All right. Um, the Speaking of holding the bag. The price is a first rounder, by the way. So that is the price right, that yeah. Atlanta would like. So, it the, will not be. so the Rams want them, but they always, they're like, they oh, never, we're out. Well, the problem is, yeah, the, you, you start the, the bidding 
uh, the trade value at a first round pick, but they have to their their salary cap. And I know that the salary cap is a lie and all this stuff, but theirs is in a really, really bad situation. They can't sign their rookies right now. Right. Patriots are being reported to have had discussions about trading for him as well. No. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, here it is. Did not report to Lambeau Field on Monday morning for the start of voluntary OTAs. And he usually does. Well, he is not under – he doesn't have an extension no. yet. Well, he's, or and he hasn't been traded. He's making a statement. One of those two things is going to happen. Let's be clear about that. He's going to get paid more money, mm -hmm. and then show up smiling, mm -hmm. or he's going to go somewhere else and then get paid more money. So either way, he's making a lot more money. Yeah. So it, it's not in his. Uh, it's not good for him to show up right now. Sure. And Deshaun Watson will not attend OTAs. Yeah. Still wants to be traded. Nobody, yeah, nobody interested good, right now. No, yeah, not nope. happening. Um, you know, he's denied wrongdoing with the lawsuits that have been filed against him. His position of wanting out of Houston has not changed. I don't think I've seen a power rankings for the 2021 season without Houston at 32 of 32 right now. And we don't know what to do with Deshaun Watson. I can mm -hmm. tell you, I, I personally, you know, we, we just finished all of our statting for the ultimate draft kit. I did not give him a snap uh, as a Houston Texan this season. What they've done with their uh, quarterback signings and drafting, they are – None of us did, did we? Did we? No. I, I went with Taylor. Yeah, so yeah, there too. is no Deshaun Watson in our rankings right did now. You throw, uh, you throw any Driscoll in there? I did not throw any <laughs> Did you uh, a toss little a little? <laughs> of Driscoll, maybe a little rookie fever. Arthur. Um, no, no, no. I, I did give the full season to, to Tyrod for now. Okay. All right, any other news, Brooksy, that we need to talk about? Nope. All right, that was today's news notes brought to you by Sleeper. Switch your league to the fastest-growing fantasy platform today. <laughs> very, very, that very, was the, both the speed and oh, the yeah. Sleeper We, right. sound we do have a Dynasty download on the show today as well, so we'll be talking some Dynasty towards the end of the show. Right now, we're going to jump into the mailbag. 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 I like it. Uh, Jason did the last one. Uh, he did one, yes. Yeah. He smashed it. Thank you. For me. It was pretty good well, for it's a, you. It's, it's a bell curve. <laughs> right. <laughs> we created the curve here. <laughs> if you have a question for the show, we want to help you out. Go to thefantasyfootballers.com. You can click the submit a question button or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We'll kick it off with a voicemail. What's up, guys? It's Will from New Hampshire. Uh, no bonjour here, but um, <laughs> I've got a keeper question. So I'm in a half PPR league, 10 teams. Who's the best keeper? Calvin Ridley in the fourth, A.J. Brown in the fifth, or Darren Waller in the sixth? Let me know what you guys think. Love the show. See ya. Yeah, I'm going to take A.J. Brown in the fifth round. Really? What was the last one? I, Darren uh, Waller in the sixth. Waller in the sixth. Oh, I, yeah, this is easy to me. This one is easy to me as well because I, as per the discussion we just had, Julio Jones is going to be traded, and that makes it easy for me to go Calvin Ridley in the fourth. I, I completely understand that. I think Calvin Ridley is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Um, that being said, fourth-round picks are still very valuable, and I think A.J. Brown is going to be phenomenal. This isn't like uh, – It's a four to five, though. Like, like Calvin – okay – I have Let's, Calvin Ridley right now as my wide receiver five. Okay. And A.J. Brown is my wide receiver six. Now, I assume that Ridley will bump up. But, I mean, that's the four guys I got ahead of him, uh, Devontae Adams, Tyree Kill, Stephon Diggs, and DeAndre Hopkins. It's He can't go up that much. It's like, to me, a four and a five, it, whatever. We're not, we're not talking a huge price difference. But to you, Jason, do you believe in the range of outcomes for this season, A.J. Brown can be – the number one wide receiver. Yes, I do. I do too. And But compare that to Calvin Ridley without Julio Jones. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not adjusting. Look, Ridley was incredible last year. I don't think the target share is going to go up a lot. What the real question is going to be. No, but but if you take what he did without Julio Jones, I don't. it doesn't need to go up. It's like he was averaging over 100 yards per game. I have A.J. Brown ahead of Ridley today. Okay. So this is a very easy pick for me, and I have him three spots ahead. So – uh, I will go Brown here. I will say the discussion around Kyle Pitts is going to get real 
real soon. Yeah. How's that going, Jason? Uh, it's going to suck, man. <laughs> so I, I already did a little <laughs> tweaking because I... Oh! Oh, have you? Well, today, based on the news, I, I don't think Julio Jones is going to be there, and so I wanted to adjust some of the stats in preparation. And I, I was trying to get out in front of it. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to be a good I've, fantasy I've, analyst. I've always... I've had him there since before the trade. <laughs> um... No, no, no. I'm but, changing uh, his right now. Yeah, he's he's my tight end six, and I... It, yeah. It, yeah. Whatever. What? <laughs> Look, if there's one thing Mike knows how to do, it's make your life miserable <laughs> over the smallest uh, difference of opinion. Yeah, that's what we do here. Um, yeah, that is kind of what we do. It's going to... Uh, so you're going to go Calvin Ridley in the fourth. That's mm -hmm. fine. It's kind of a debate about the value of the fourth and fifth, the difference, and then it... To me, it's more of a heads-up decision with the fourth and fifth, and I yes. like Brown more, so I'll take Brown. I think Brown can go into the uh, Devontae Adams realm. I think that that's a real possibility. I, you know, with with the targets available in Tennessee, I think that he is he's he's in the argument for best dynasty wide receiver option to yeah. to, to take. He he can't get to Adams level to me. So, like yes, there are a bunch of targets available for Tennessee. And AJ Brown's target share is going to go up, but it's not going to. I don't think it turns into Devonte Adams, where it's thirty percent plus of Aaron Rodgers' targets. Where we, you just talked about it, that Matt Ryan, you've got him for well over, or not well, but you have him for over five thousand yards because Matt Ryan is the king of yardage. And the, if that's going to Calvin Ridley, that's where I would go. It's just not. It. I don't know if it's that much of a gap to make up. I mean, he's a, he's an eighty. Two reception guy from week six on for th 1,300 yards. So I don't – can he get to 100 receptions? I think so. Yeah. And, and Is that A.J. Brown? Yeah. The Sorry. difference here – like here, I'm, I'm pulling up just looking at what some value of the fourth round versus sixth round is. Fifth right, round. Right now, it was – Waller AJ, was the six. A.J. Brown was a five. Okay, so you've got uh, the difference between uh, Julio, Amari Cooper, Chris Godwin, Robert Woods in the fourth. In the fifth, you've got Deontay Johnson, Cooper Cup, um, Tyler Lockett. I would rather have one of those aforementioned guys with AJ Brown than right. uh, Deontay Johnson and and Ridley. Fair but enough. It's good. Uh, you're stupid. But moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we get to more questions, I want to thank today's sponsor. It's a new one, people. Code Academy. There's never been a better time to become a programmer, and with Code Academy, you can learn to code on your own terms. Simply put, Code Academy is the best way to learn code online. They not only teach you job ready coding skills, but also help you build unique projects with your portfolio, earn certificates, and even prep for technical interviews. Uh, like, it reminds me of a conversation I was having with my wife. And it's like, what skills do we need to make sure that our kids have? Oh, yeah. And my number one answer was they need to know how to code. 100%. Like, it, it doesn't matter what occupation you are in if you know how to code like if you can learn python html javascript uh it helps you think too yes i mean it's the way that it world helps works. your brain and code academy is the way to get there tools cheat seats uh cheat sheets to help get the ideas tailor-made quizzes this is the best way to learn how to code and coding is something that can take you to a another level if you're at a job you don't like learn how to code you're at a job that you do like. Learn how to code. It's going to make things better. Join the millions of people learning to code with Code Academy and see where coding can take you. Get 15% off your Code Academy Pro membership when you go to CodeAcademy.com. Use the promo code Ballers. That's promo code Ballers at CodeAcademy.com to get 15% off Code Academy Pro. The best way to learn. C O D E C A D E M Y dot com. Promo code Ballers. And Foot Clan, we want to thank Meat for being. <laughs> Did you meat. say meat? Yes, meat. M-E-A-T. <laughs> we want to thank it for being delicious and wonderful. And I get my meat from Omaha Steaks, and you do too, because you've listened for a long time. And you know that this time of year, Omaha Steaks it, is when, hitting us up. When Omaha's on the show, you know that it's time. Oh, Father's Day's right around the corner. You know you've got the Get Out and Grill assortment package that is finally around and ready. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to omahasteaks.com. You're going to type footballers in the search bar, and you're going to get that get out and grill assortment. It's going to give you 20 entrees guaranteed that your dad will love, like ultra juicy burgers, plump chicken breasts, sides, desserts, four 10-ounce butcher's cut New York strips. These strips are aged 30 days. Why is that important? 
Age equals tenderness. Yeah. Uh, plus four free New York strip burgers with your order. It, look, it's the best steak of your life. And the nice thing is when you give this as a gift, it's going to be shared with you. It's a pro move. It's a gift to so yourself. Visit OmahaSteaks.com. Keyword footballers. Order the get out and grill assortment today. Send dad more than just a gift. Gift. Send him an experience he'll love that he could share with you. And don't forget. Right now, for a limited time, you get four free New York Strip burgers with your order. That's OmahaSteaks.com, keyword footballers. All right. Simple question from YouTube. Dead Waves wants to know, what is Kenny Galladay's ceiling? I think Kenny Galladay's ceiling is still a top 12 wide receiver. I, I don't think he has the ability to, you know, we just had the question with Ridley and A.J. Brown. Could he be the number one? No. Daniel Jones can't can support that. Um, there's a lot of mouths to feed there versus, you know, A.J. Brown is pretty much by himself. So, But I, I do think that there is a world. I don't have this projected. I don't have him statted out for 150 targets. But um, if he were to become the alpha target uh, volume guy, then his ceiling is phenomenal because he's good at what Daniel Jones does. He's a great wide receiver in general. Um, he's good at fumbling? <laughs> Very nice. Touché. I like what you did. Um, but the deep ball. Uh, Daniel Jones could throw a decent deep ball. And, uh, you know, the the reality is when you have a question that's just about someone's ceiling, it sounds rosy. I don't expect him to hit his ceiling. Wide receiver 10, okay. I think. Sure. When you're that big and you've led the league in touchdowns at the position before, sure. When, when you're that big and a team has given you that much money, I yeah. I do have him over the 150 target threshold. He has, really? Yeah, he's my wide receiver 12 right now. If uh, Daniel Jones wants a chance to succeed, he ought to. He, he should do better. Ought, he better do that. <laughs> yes. Austin Eckler question from YouTube. Nick wants to know in a PPR league, how high is too high to draft Austin Eckler? Oh man, should I be picking Tyreek Hill and Stephon Diggs over him if they are on the board? <sighs> Ooh. I mean, that is the dilemma, right? When you get yeah. towards full PPR, you get towards the end of the first round. Man, I think I would take Eckler. Austin Eckler, just for some context, when he returned, he played from weeks 12 through 17 last year, coming back from injury. His target pace was 136 <laughs> targets. <laughs> oh, brother. 104 receptions, 733 <laughs> receiving yards. And 5.7 touchdowns. Receiving only, right? That's all receiving only. There is not a world that I can see or a player on this team that is going to threaten Austin Eckler. The only thing that will threaten him will be his own health and bad fortune. The, because yeah. if he's out there, he's probably a steal. The offensive line for the Chargers was one of the worst lines in the league last year. And they have invested as much or more than any other team in the NFL this season. They've upgraded their center drastically, which always helps the running back a lot. I have Austin Eckler as my running back nine right now in half point. I'm sure even higher in full PPR. Uh, I have no problem drafting Austin Eckler even ahead of Stephon Diggs, who's my running or my wide receiver three. Now, if this is, you say full PPR, if it's a three wide receiver, two running back league, then you're going to want that depth at wide receiver or multiple flex. Sure. Uh, then you know I would take that tip top wide receiver over him, but it, otherwise, if it's two running back, two wide receiver, and a flex, and it's half, P or this is full PPR, I'm still willing to take Austin Eckler there. All right, Instagram question from Anthony uh, Castilla: uh, Can we be friends? Oh yes, we can be friends. What we're not? I thought this question insinuates that right does. now, actively, we are not friends. Yeah, because you don't are you ask guys a fighting? Friend. Are you guys fighting right now? I no. You, you guys and Anthony. I didn't think so. I didn't know Maybe we were, but something. I think we I think we must be. It's really mm. you don't ask a friend if you can be friends. It's just That's not true. something you do. So friendship retracted. Oh now now the answer's no. Well the current yeah, that's what I mean. The current friendship has now been retracted, but do you offer a new friendship contract? Yeah, I'm I'm taking my left hand back, but I'm I'm extending my right. I'm uh. saying nice to meet you again. <laughs> Come be my friend. That was a quit you went full circle. That's well with, yeah, with that's, Anthony. That's right. Full circle, 360, so that I turn my back on him, but I here I am again. I'm right back there because it was just a it was just a one you know wasn't a 180, two of them. So we're was, here two, we are. Two of those, two of those, as they call it in the biz, two 180s. And we're gonna, so remember when Tony Hawk did that double 180? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty pretty sweet double 180, man. Oh, so you're you do four 180s? That's crazy. So you're friends again? 
Yeah, we're friends. That's where again. that's what I got. All right. Um YouTube question. Running back question. Who is the last running back that you would feel comfortable starting as your RB one? So is Ooh. Eckler in that discussion? Eckler, I would be absolutely comfortable starting him as my running back one. For me, I think the one that I would be comfortable with as my RB one, the lowest on my rankings, um, would be Antonio Gibson. Um, I am a believer in him as a running back one this year. Um, I think he gets the workload that he started to get before his uh, toe injury at the end of the season. That's how I'm projecting the Washington football team. And while I would love to have a better running back than him, I'm still comfortable with him being my first running back. I will answer it slightly different with the first one that I'm not comfortable with, which would be DeAndre Swift. I am not comfortable with DeAndre Swift as my running back one. Gibson, I'm with you. I'm comfortable there. Do you know who I have? Eckler. I'm, I'm comfortable with Josh Jacobs as my running back one. Well, I disagree with that. Um, I'm looking at my rankings. The running back I have right after Antonio Gibson is DeAndre Swift. So mm -hmm. we have the same cutoff line yeah. between those two. I w of my list, like, I mean, I I really like most of the guys in my top twenty. And I mean, you're balancing your opportunity cost because you're saying if this person is my running back one, I have Travis Kelsey. I have elite wide receivers. So I I would be willing to go down to someone like Chris Carson as my running back one to pair with a powerhouse at the other positions. All right. Twitter question from Brandon. What is your preferred best ball strategy going into the season? I know we have some news on that front, Mike. The best ball front. We do have some news on the best ball front. Number one, uh, it's a very fun format. If you've never played it, and essentially what it is is do 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 <laughs> Super fun format. Thank you, Jason. You're welcome. Uh, you draft, and then the computer puts in your best optimal lineup every single week. Once you draft, you are done. Uh, thank you, computer. And I know Sleeper's adding it, and there's some other places that you can uh, play as well. And if you are going to play, boom. We have best ball rankings that are coming into the UDK+. Plus. Uh, they will be supplied by our DFS uh, pros. Kyle the Borgogan and Matthew Betts are our PT, our football PT here, and so if, they host if the DFS pod. They ho they also host the DFS pod. So if you want access to those, the UDK Plus, which is at the lowest possible price right now. I uh, I would also piggyback with talking about what they do with best ball and say if you want some really good best ball tips, go listen to the Fantasy Footballers DFS pod that covers best ball because your your question. Has an has a bunch of uh, nuances and things nuances like that, yeah. and stuff like that. I'll throw out one little tip. I really, 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 really want mobile quarterbacks in best ball. I mean, I do in in both formats, but when you've got multiple quarterbacks, you want those monstrous games because you have to win the whole league. And those monstrous, huge, gigantic blow up forty point games usually come from someone who can run the ball. And we're getting a lot more of those players now. Like it's it's wild when you look at the. Especially the incoming crop, we just added Trey Lance and Justin Fields, very mobile guys, and Trevor Lawrence is no slouch when it comes to to, to getting you some if rushing yards. Taysom Hill wins the job, yeah, the, Jalen Hurts, Kyler, Lamar, Josh Allen, Dak, uh, Russ to a lesser. So apparently, extent I now, just but, want a quarterback. <laughs> I was just saying that that's the we're going to have to reevaluate the quarterback position, especially once this new crop establishes that. They're they're in play for fantasy because no longer will it be well just wait because they're you know that at the the ninth round there's this very mobile quarterback who is going to give you an incredible floor and an incredible ceiling. Like last year it was it was easily Josh Allen. A couple years ago you're like Lamar Jackson is just not being drafted and you're not paying attention to what his ceiling can be because of the scoring discrepancy. Just throwing out that the it, we have a change coming here to. How you how we should be valuing a quarterback because now the group is so uh, condensed. No longer is it clearly just two guys at the top with that upside. All right, Instagram question: How many players uh, on your fantasy team is too many from the same NFL team? Depends on the team, <laughs> my man. I mean, I would say two from the Jets. I would say that's too many for me. Yeah, one one maximum. one from the yeah. Jets is too many for me. Sorry, Jets fans. I'm I'm really just uh, jabbing you there. 
if you're a great team, I can have three on a team. If you're a great, a prolific offense, and I've got three players from your team, I what about four? I, I yeah, you I don't cannot, want Clyde, Mahomes, Kelsey, and Tyreek Hill. I don't think I would want if I had that. Like, let's say I somehow left the draft with that, I'd be very happy. But I would be looking to move, you know, Clyde for a different running back or or one of those pieces. That's just yeah. You're you're losing when the Chiefs are shut down. You're guaranteed to lose if you in, if your quantity is so high on one team. Yeah, and 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 I will say this: um, in years past, there's been debate over. Obviously, the, the advantage of stacking a quarterback and a wide receiver, a quarterback and a pass catcher, really. It could be a pass yeah. catching running back. That is a great, great strategy. Um, I love doing it, but it has taught people that putting a wide receiver or a pass catcher and a running back on the same team is not good. And for, for redraft, that's not true. Uh, you get more consistency. You just can't both score uh, you know, a touchdown on the same play. And that over the course of the year if they're both good players you're going to be consistent and still win i was i was told a quarterback cannot th throw a, a a passing touchdown and receiving touchdown on the same play and then marcus mariota proved you wrong that is fair he did do that that was awesome <laughs> his his highlight yes Tru as truly, a professional truly the pinnacle of his career that has to be the highest scoring play of all time right when you can for a single play you you, you get a receiving touchdown and a passing touchdown Maybe. The yardage. I think it was only it was, like it was seven yards, short, though. Yeah. Dynasty running back this or that question. Gulp. Big gulps? Instagram. Uh, w. Drake Hill asks this difficult one, in my opinion. Joe Mixon mm -hmm. or Aaron Jones? In a dynasty? Correct. <sighs> Man. That is very difficult. I want it. They're both on the same contract situation, same age. No. No? Aaron Jones is much older. Two years. In, in running back years. Sure. No, I'm, I'm agreeing in, with you. 20, in running back years, that's a lot older. I will take Joe Mixon. Oh, man, I feel like but I But you have, knew that already. I feel like I have Aaron Jones higher in my rankings, but because I, I think that the way that Aaron Jones plays, and it's, it's not a – grinding him into the ground it's more like Alvin Kamara so I think he has an extended sh uh, shelf life in the NFL how's his shelf but, life without Rodgers but if Aaron Rodgers is gone his scoring opportunities are going to plummet he's still going to be a great player and good for fantasy but he's not going to be scoring 13 rushing touchdowns I have Mixon in, in redraft ahead of Aaron Jones right now there's no question mark about his quarterback leaving and he's two years younger so for me it's an easy Mixon but then you think I'm super disrespectful to Aaron Jones usually, so Yes, there you I, go. I do normally think that, yes. What is the current status in your mind of Aaron Rodgers? If you had to handicap it today, Tuesday, I, May twenty fifth, Aaron Rodgers percentage chance of returning to Green Bay. I would say thirty five percent chance returning, sixty five percent chance leaving. Wow, Mike. I don't even know which side you're surprised about. Like, am I too high or too low? I am much higher that he's going to leave. I would say... Higher than 65%. Yeah. I would go as like 75% chance he's gone. I think he stays. Oh, that would be nice. But I want that percentage 60, of your 40. mind. 60-40. Okay. No. No, let's go 45. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. Al Borland. You're yeah. on the microphone, right? Yep. And you're you're a fan of the Green Bay Packers? Yes, sir. Are you happy with my prediction? Yes. So you would like him to return? Yeah. Have you moved past the – like I know there's a lot of stages of grief and things of that nature. There was a time when you kind of wanted him to move on if he didn't want to be there. Do you still feel that way? Yeah. I don't – when was there a time you wanted him to move on? That, that happened? What I said was that if he didn't want to play there, I'd rather see him go. Yeah, he was being – Oh, for him, was for his dumb. sake. Yeah. You were doing this for Aaron? It's very no, noble. No, no, he's doing it for. He's just saying that he he doesn't he's, want the locker room yeah. cancer of a, of a quarterback Hall of Famer that doesn't want to be there. The cancer of Aaron Rodgers he in the locker wanna, room would win you more games. He didn't want to be there last year. If yeah. things went all right, um, due to it being Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. So I just want to point out that the Packers fan is happy with a fifty five percent chance of Aaron Rodgers coming back to the team. That's that's the place we are at. Well, right it's now. the best option he got from the three of us. Yeah, <laughs> you two are like uh, shipping him down the. I'm think, not. No, I'm not I, I shipping could, him. I'm just Aaron Rodgers is a 
I he's think a he, stubborn, I think he's a stubborn man. He's definitely someone who would retire if he if he if he digs his heels in and says I'm not coming I'm not playing for you, uh, you know, uh, unless you fire the GM and they don't do that and he just goes on then I retire. I still believe this is about respect and I think respect is often shown in cold hard cash in this in this business. <laughs> That's really and, why I feel so disrespected from this job. Right. <laughs> And so I think that that respect will materialize financially <laughs> to Blake Boros. I think he stays. All right. Make my job easier projecting these I think Green Bay Packers. It's better for it's better for football that I believe that he's in Green Bay. Yeah, 100%. Green Bay is a great franchise that is fun to be good and I I hope he's back. I just don't think it's And no happen. one else can put up those numbers in the snow. We need Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I guess it's good for the Cardinals. Easier path through the NFC if Aaron's in the AFC. Yeah, and we played the Packers this year, so retire, Aaron. Mm. I've changed my percentage. <laughs> All right, uh, here's a question that we will not agree on. Najee in a dynasty startup draft. Maybe we will. Instagram question from Logan. What is the earliest that you would draft Najee Harris in a dynasty startup draft? So... All the rookies mixing in with the veterans. Brand new draft. What's the earliest you would take Najee? Well, let's go with the the Najiest of the three of us, which Mike and I are both big <laughs> Najee fans. But Mike, he's I've, the Najiest. I've, I've never been called Najiest. It won't be the last time. All uh, right, that's a promise from me to you. Okay. So where would you go? What's the highest? So I'm look. I have Najee at ten for my running back rankings. So if if I'm in a startup and the wide receivers are there, I mean, maybe back of the second, maybe. I mean, it's it's hard. I, I don't want to run through every single name I would take in front of him, but I would I would be aggressive. I, he is uh, he's older for a prospect coming into the league uh, for running back, 23. But I think you get a full, you know, f five years full rookie contract, full rookie con first rounder. So he'll have the 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 first round uh, first round extension. So I, I'm look. I look at Najee as a five year starter. Yeah, where I've got him in in my startup rankings would put him in the third round. Um, so I yeah I I think there's just there's probably 24 players I would prefer over him. I can't imagine him getting into my top 24 yet. But I, I mean, look if he hits and is an awesome, fantastic rookie who gets five years, that's all you get from anybody. Like the the age. Age kind of matters, right? We just had the question on Aaron Jones and Joe Mixon, and so now years later, they're both on getting their second contract, but one appears to have more shelf life, but is pretty irrelevant. They're probably going to have the same amount of years. Five years from a running back, if you if you get that, is great. That would be outstanding. Yes. Are you drafting him ahead of DeAndre Swift in a in a dynasty startup draft? Yes. Yes. Okay. I I I'm not as bullish because he hasn't done it. And neither has the, you know, last year was the same story. Clyde Edwards Alaire looked guaranteed. DeAndre Swift looked guaranteed. Going into the NFL, I don't think I'm willing to invest a second round pick on somebody that hasn't done it. But in, in your 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 reference here to last year's rookie, almost every last season's rookie, J.K. Dobbins, DeAndre Swift, they are all younger than Najee, who is a this year's rookie. So, that's why I asked the question. Right. Yeah, that's why I asked about DeAndre Swift in particular, because it's kind of like I I, th I just think it's very tempting when you haven't seen it to only see good. Certainly, I I I mean I see that with uh, with the Pitts and Jamar Chase conversations we've had. Yeah. Well, you, now you're just talking crazy. I mean, with rookies, you just you have to pick which side you're in. If are you willing to pay that price? Do you believe in the player that much? And I do believe in Najee. The, bi that the big much. thing about Najee to me is that he wasn't a top ten NFL draft pick. If he had been in that category, you have a little bit more of a historical basis for for him to be a guarantee. He is more in the he's he's drafted where the Rashad Pennies and the Sonny Michels and the you know the uh, some of the guys from last year, even Clyde, late first round, not a guarantee, even though we thought he was. Um, so uh, you know, percentage chance I think he's successful, you know, eighty percent. But I don't know what that's going to mean with a transition at quarterback. Do you lose? You said a five-year window. Do you lose two years of efficiency because you're? Yes, of course you do. Because you don't ben, have Big Ben. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, unless you are, you know, one of two franchises ever, or the aforementioned Green Bay or or the Colts who go from you know 
Hall of Fame caliber quarterback to a Hall of Fame caliber quarterback, you're gonna you're gonna lose some offense. Yeah. All right, let's do some dynasty. Dynasty download. What do you why are you guys encroaching on my, I don't know. I will clearly I don't want any part of that. In that graphic, it was me and my champion. Like he had been cloned many times over, which imagine the NFL if Antonio Gibson was just on every single team. It would be incredible. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you guys just come flying out of the corner. What was that all about? I, I have no interest in we being a part of that. We don't the graphics here. Clearly. Well, I uh, want you out. It's getting a little scary, a little frightening. <laughs> it's a lot of Antonio Gibson. I don't know. Twitter question, dynasty question from Mikey says, it's my first year as a dynasty commissioner. What are some staple rules, regulations that hmm. should be a part of any dynasty league? A lot of players, new leagues. What do you think? Um, so I, I know one of the things we do in our league, we have an in-season and an off-season fab. So we use the free agent acquisition budget system, not a waiver wire system uh, of, of just waiver priority, but you get to bid on players. And so we reset it for both the off-season and the in-season so that you can – um, so you can make transactions in the off season, spend budget. Um, yeah, because in Dynasty, the off season is its own entity. It is not part of the regular season. So uh, everyone gets reset as soon as the champion is crowned, and everyone gets reset as soon as uh, essentially all the players are locked from week one. Uh, I I think that's really important. To establish. When are you going to have your rookie draft? We do our rookie draft right after the NFL draft. There are people who do it way before, and there are people who want more information. So they wait. They do their rookie draft in more, August or when the people are doing season. their redrafts. Determine how many years of rookie picks you'll make available to trade. Mm -hmm. uh, when we roll over to the new rookie draft, we always have three years of available first rounders. Yeah, and uh, we, always a, we, it's always rarely... a bright new day when I have a. <laughs> What is it, 2024 rookie <laughs> pick to ship off? We rarely trade our three-year-out picks. It happens from time to time. I've tried. But, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, they don't it, have it, much value. It doesn't have much value, yeah. And, look, it's dynasty. I, it's when, when you start it, it's beautiful. Everyone is in. They're all in it to win it. I'm in this league forever. Things happen. Uh, maybe gauge some interest of – in case there's a, a backup list that you want to get going, you don't have to do that from day one, but it's just that's something you should be a waiting list of, a waiting list yeah. for for future managers to jump in if they need to. And if you're starting a new league, um, I I don't know if it's already established or not, but I know what we've done in the past for some of our leagues is, uh, so let's say you want to end at like a thirty, you know, thirty player roster or something like that. What we did is we. We drafted 26 players, and then the first rookie draft we had, we expanded it um, so you didn't have to drop players. But then subsequently, once you get to that number, then we just basically, however many rookie picks you have coming in, you have to cut that many players from your roster to make room. In case you missed it, we did do Dynasty Week, a couple of shows that you can check out, high risk, right? high reward players. It was a live stream. Uh, that was a live stream we did on YouTube, so there are some videos you can watch. On our YouTube from a couple weeks back. Oh, I've got another really important staple. Um, if you're in a dynasty, don't do kickers. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. That was no, the yeah, staple. Yeah. Just don't do kickers. But if you want to do redraft, I would get rid of them as well. Yeah. I love not having defense as well in dynasty. See, you know, it's funny you say that. I've heard a lot of people say every, every dynasty league I've been in, I've gotten rid of defenses but I I feel like I'm I feel like I miss I feel like I want it but I'm not you don't you don't think so no I've I've had defense in you Dynasty feel like you miss defenses I do I I do now but here's the nah. thing right you don't know because nah. all of the leagues I'm in don't have them so it's one of those things where it's like you want what you don't have but then when I get it I'll be like this sucks what yeah am I, so that's what am I'm, I'm helping you over here as your friend you don't want that a we, lot of extra flex yeah. though we want to thank pristine auction don't we mike we do brandon Ayuk signed nfl football Ayukin. 20 bucks right now ends on thursday night i'm a little low on brandon Ayuk. i need to raise him up a little bit i think you should i think you should it's very the 49ers are difficult because very. if if everybody's healthy i know what they want to do i know what they want to do with the offense i know it revolves around 
Kittle and Debo ahead of Ayuk. But then you really need to factor whether he's going to be available. I don't. I, I believe it's Ayuk ahead of Debo. Well, not, it's not from Kyle Shanahan's perspective. It is when he's hurt. Well, but when they were both on the field at the same time last year, which we didn't have a, a ton of games, but you had a handful. It, Ayuk. Uh, they, I guess he got, the, the targets Samuel were got hurt in the very beginning of the game he returned, and they were all going his way. And uh, he we was were, on record of that game saying the game plan was built around Debo. So that's what I believe. We haven't seen the, the 49er offense really unleashed with those two wide receivers and George Kittle. We haven't seen that for an extended period of time. And we may not. Who's, who's the quarterback? Yeah, we might not see it. We don't know. But anyways, I'm too low on Ayuk. I admit that. Uh, I need to probably count. Like Debo's one of the few players I should probably not think of 17 yeah. games as a realistic possibility. Dante Adams signed jersey right now, 20 bucks. Uh, that's the current price. Ends on Thursday. Check out pristineauction.com. Use our code BALLERS and you'll get a $10 credit. That'll do it, Brooks. What's our Thursday show? We're talking about ultimate draft tips. Oh, oh yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. Take care, Clan. We'll see you next time, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. This episode was brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Go to omahasteaks.com, use the code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar, and for a limited time, you're going to get four free New York strip burgers with your order. That's omahasteaks.com, keyword FOOTBALLERS.